history has shown, you go to greater and greater extremism and then you have the, the battle. And I think that that's what we should be afraid of most is that those extremists in a battle having a type of civil war, which I think there's a reasonable chance of. Ray Dalio believes the US is on the brink of civil war, something he's been warning about for almost two years. In his book, The Changing World Order, Dalio initially pegged the odds of a civil war at 30%. But in a recent interview with Charlie Rose, he said there's now a 40% chance. Um, I put the odds of, of something like that at about 40%. 40? 40%. 40? 40%. Dalio thinks the US is about to lose its position as the leading world order, and that the results of the 2024 US presidential elections will be highly contested. More and more people are going to resist the rule of law, and the constitution will have diminished value. Sounds scary, right? Well, I think Dalio might be the one to save us. Ray Dalio is one of the greatest thinkers and financial minds of our time. He founded Bridgewater out of his two-bedroom apartment in New York City in 1975 and built it into the world's largest hedge fund with $150 billion under management. Time Magazine has named Dalio one of the most influential people in the world, and I think there's room for him to become even more influential. Ray Dalio has accumulated a net worth of $19 billion, which makes him the 75th richest person in the world. He's a global macro investor at heart and predicted the 2008 financial crisis. Why didn't he warn anyone? Well, he did, just like he is now, but at the time, no one believed him. In 2007, Dalio wrote a memo titled, This is the Big One, warning clients and policymakers of the threat to the financial system and its impending collapse. He visited the White House and the US Treasury, walking through his analysis and mechanistically explaining what was about to happen. But they dismissed his findings and said that it was unlikely. Why? Because it didn't happen before um, in their lifetime, they thought it was implausible. Dalio is a big believer in studying history to figure out future outcomes. Every decision we face in life has a precedent, whether we've personally witnessed it or not. Just because something hasn't happened in your lifetime yet doesn't mean that it's impossible for it to occur at all. Dalio learned early in life that the things that surprised him the most were things that hadn't happened in his lifetime, but that had actually happened throughout history many times before. So in order to understand how the world really works, he decided to study 500 years worth of economic history, analyze every debt cycle, and evaluate what caused nations to rise and fall. How did he know that the banking system was about to collapse? He carefully studied the 1920s Weimar Republic in Germany, and the 1930s Great Depression in the US, and saw clear patterns to 2007, including the country's high debt-to-income levels. Even as policymakers refused to listen to him, Dalio prepared himself. Bridgewater's Pure Alpha Fund generated a 10% return in 2008, when the average hedge fund lost 19%. Dalio has now officially handed over the reins of Bridgewater to these guys. Having fully transitioned out of his day job and with more time on his hands, I believe Dalio will become more vocal about the trajectory of the global economy and world politics. America is in a dire situation. Inflation is at record highs, GDP is declining, and the country is getting increasingly polarized. Wealth inequality is rising, and World War III is looming over our heads. Dalio not only believes that the US is on the precipice of civil war, but that China will soon topple America as the world's leading superpower. And this usually happens after a big conflict or war. I've studied Ray Dalio for years. I've read all his books and watched every interview imaginable. So let's go through three reasons why the US and the world needs a president like Ray Dalio. Joe Biden might again run in 2024. Donald Trump has reportedly not only made a decision about the 2024 New polls show that neither Republican nor Democratic voters are particularly happy about their options for the 2024 presidential race. In order to figure out what kind of president Ray Dalio would be, we need a clear window into his mind and fully understand his values. What was he like as a child? How does he process information, manage people, assess risk, and make decisions? Ray grew up an ordinary kid in a middle-class neighborhood in Queens, New York. It was the 1950s post-war America, and rock and roll was all the rage. Young couples dreamed of picket fences and two and a half kids. Ray's father was a jazz musician who played with Frank Sinatra and worked late hours. As an only child, Ray enjoyed the attention of his mother who was a stay-at-home mom. The two developed a close relationship and would watch late night horror movies together while chocolate chip cookies were baking in the oven. Ray describes his childhood as happy, but it took a turn for the worse when Ray was 19 and his mom passed away in front of his eyes. It happened in front of me. Um, she had a heart attack um, and she was dying and uh, she, you know she was on the bed um, and my dad was there and I... Um, tried to revive her, you know, I didn't know mouth to mouth resuscitation and so on. And, um, and I remember that, uh, you know, that was a, that was a big moment at, at that time. Um, I 
couldn't imagine ever being able to smile or laugh again. Ray and his dad grew closer as a result. He always admired his dad's strong character. Ray was a curious child and he describes himself as an independent thinker. He was excited about visualizing his future and would always set ambitious goals for himself. If he failed, he made sure to always learn from it. Ray enjoyed sports and playing with friends, but he disliked school, especially the concept of rote memorization. What was the point of remembering random facts without reference to its meaning or context? He struggled to follow instructions and preferred to figure things out for himself. Similar to other great investors like Warren Buffett, Ray showed entrepreneurial tendencies at an early age. He had a newspaper route at the age of 8 and worked as a caddy at the Lynx Golf Club when he was 12. Lynx was an exclusive course, and his customers included soon-to-be President Richard Nixon, the Duke of Windsor, and numerous Wall Street investors. He witnessed firsthand how politicians and investors conducted themselves and how they analyzed complex business, political, and social issues. With the $300 he had saved from his caddy earnings, Ray bought his first stock in Northeast Airlines. At $5 a share, it was the only major company he could afford. As luck would have it, Northeast became the object of a merger effort, and Ray tripled his investment. He was hooked. Ray would spend the rest of his childhood reading annual reports and learning investing principles. He realized that even careful research can lead to expensive mistakes. It doesn't matter how much conviction you have, there will always be blind spots. To combat this, whenever he formed an opinion about a stock, he asked the smartest investors he knew to challenge his reasoning. By the time he graduated high school, he had accumulated a stock portfolio worth several thousand dollars. Not bad for a teenager in the 1960s. Given his subpar academic performance though, Ray struggled to find a college. He eventually enrolled at Long Island University. Free to finally seek out his interests and choose his own courses, Ray excelled academically, which led him to Harvard. Harvard Business School. While a student at HBS, Ray managed to land various gigs on Wall Street, including trading commodities at Merrill Lynch and working as a clerk on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange in 1971. This coincided with the United States defaulting on its debt and President Nixon severing the relationship between the US dollar and the value of gold. Dalio watched the crisis unfold in awe and expected the stock market to tank the next day, but he was wrong. Stocks soared by 33%. This surprised him because he had never experienced a currency devaluation before. But looking at history, he realized that this had actually happened before in 1933. This taught him the importance of always studying history to determine future outcomes. On Twitter, Ray Dalio calls himself a professional mistake maker, and his biggest mistake would come in 1982 at the age of 33, during the Latin American debt crisis. At this time, American banks had lent a lot of money to emerging Latin American countries, including Mexico. When Mexico announced that they were unable to repay their $80 billion dollars worth of debt, Dalio predicted that other countries would follow and the global economy would spiral towards a depression. He positioned his portfolio accordingly. But the downturn never came. Instead, Mexico rescheduled its debt and the Fed cut interest rates which sent the stock market on a big bull run. Over the next 18 years, the US economy enjoyed the greatest non-inflationary growth period in its history. Dalio experienced massive losses and was forced to lay off all his employees. He even had to borrow $4,000 from his dad to make ends meet. Dalio says he was too arrogant, overconfident, and failed to do enough research to consider a broad range of turnouts. But it was also the best thing that happened to him. Dalio's big miss was a humbling experience, and he promised himself to never let arrogance get to his head again. Over the years, he committed to studying the human brain and psychology. He regularly practiced meditation, which he calls the biggest reason to his success. Meditation was fantastic. Meditation is the biggest gift that I can give anyone. And I would say more than anything, it is whatever reason for success I've had. Dalio realized that the human brain is made up of two yous, a conscious logical you and a subconscious emotional you. These two yous fight to control you. The conscious mind is in a constant battle with the subconscious mind. Unfortunately, the subconscious emotional you often wins and works against your logical use goals and interests. This is obviously a problem. We don't want our emotions to control us. Dalio wanted to separate his biases and emotions from his ideas, so he developed a set of principles to help him and his colleagues make better decisions. He built Bridgewater into an idea meritocracy, a company culture where open and honest dialogue was encouraged and where the best thinking prevailed. Your personal beliefs and opinions were of little value. What mattered was whether what you were saying was true or not. Every meeting was recorded and employees were held to high standards of open-mindedness. Radical truth and radical transparency became a key framework. Is the Fed going to raise interest rates? Why or why not? Will the Russia-Ukraine war impact energy prices? Why or why not? 
Regardless of profession, the person with the fewest blind spots in life usually wins. This is especially important in a president and a world leader. Truth is the number one thing we should all seek and strive for. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, black or white, rich or poor. We were literally taught this as children. Seek out truth, don't lie. By figuring out how the world really works and what is actually true, we'll find the best solutions to our problems. Social media has polarized us for years, and politicians are spewing non-factual comments on the daily. Biden is trying to change the definition of a recession, and Trump has literally started his own social platform to spread his political agenda. Funny how he calls this Twitter competitor, Truth Social. Was it fair to kick Trump off Twitter? I'm not convinced it was. Twitter is of course a corporation and not a public good, so they can do whatever they want, but I'd love Twitter to be a representation of a public town square, where we all can come together and figure out what's really true. We'd be better off teaching people how to think critically. Everyone is making up their own version of what's true, but at its core, there's only one objective truth. And I believe we find it by adopting Ray Dalio's mindset, by being radically transparent and open-minded. My videos definitely have factual shortcomings and biases as well. I'm trying to improve those, so please hold me accountable in the comments. That's how I learn. We need a president who values truth more than anything else. Not my version of truth or your version of truth, but the actual truth grounded in science and empirical research. Are vaccines effective or not? Is climate change a threat to mankind? Should we subsidize higher education? Why or why not? Should the US send weapons to Ukraine? If so, how many and under what circumstances? What's the best strategy to avoid a nuclear war? Washington seems to be full of people who are advocating their own personal interests rather than what's best for America and the world. How much of this is people talking their book, their book being the military industrial complex in your mind? I think it's a big part of it. I think all of these Washington think tanks are funded by defense contractors. I think it's short-sighted, obviously, because if it leads to a nuclear war, there's not going to be a defense industry, there won't be anything left. So, but look, I think that, I think that Washington is wired for war in part because there's a huge lobby for it, for all these defense contractors. And what's the lobby for peace? I mean, there's no one really arguing for peace. Ray Dalio challenges himself to view the world from an objective lens. He strives to find the best thinking in the world, which leads to innovation, economic output, peace, and prosperity. I doubt he would mislead the public in order to serve his own interests or gain popularity. He doesn't need to. The guy has made billions of dollars, sold millions of books, and has more than 5 million followers on his social platforms. You'd be surprised how many people are bullish on Dalio's world where a radical truth and radical transparency prevails. The fact that his principles on life, work, economics, and politics are readily available for the entire world to read is in of itself a great sign. America doesn't need an unpredictable president who campaigns on a certain election promise and then does a complete 180 as soon as they get settled in the Oval Office. Because Dalio is a seeker of truth and an open book, we can already deduce what some of his core policies would revolve around. Ray Dalio is the quintessential self-made billionaire. From his humble origins in Queens to a global financial empire, Dalio has earned every penny through consistent hard work. Unlike Donald Trump, he didn't receive a $400 million inheritance from his dad. Even if you want to eat the rich and hate hedge funds, I think you can appreciate that Dalio is a rare billionaire who's calling for a more equitable distribution of wealth. He has called America's current wealth inequality a national emergency and an existential risk to the US. Dalio has said that leaving so many children in poverty and not educating them well is the equivalent of child abuse, and it is economically stupid. He believes social economic inequalities is a leading indicator to predict the collapse of a country. The vision amongst citizens fuels anger and violence. As president, Ray Dalio would make bipartisanship his ultimate goal, and I believe he would do an excellent job at uniting the country. Dalio is well respected by both Democrats and Republicans, by people early in their careers, and by people already at the pinnacle of success. A president who is able to reach across the aisle in Capitol Hill is crucial in order to avoid further polarization. Dalio has a deep understanding of fiscal and monetary policy. He understands how the world works, both from a political and economical perspective. If you don't think this is important in a world leader, just take a look at the UK. Liz Truss almost wrecked the entire British financial system, something Ray Dalio was quick to criticize. The world needs a US president who understands how countries and how the world change through an economic and social lens. Ray Dalio is arguably one of the most thoughtful people on the matter. He has a unique talent for identifying the key questions of our time, and he's made all his findings available online for free. A great sign for a leader who seeks truth and wants to find the best path forward. Upon studying 11 empires in in the past 500 years, Dalio found out that all empires rise and fall for the same reasons. He calls this the big cycle. In a nutshell, here's how it works. A new world order is typically established after a major conflict such as a war. 
because no other country wants to challenge this new power, a period of peace and prosperity follows. As people become complacent with the current situation, they bet that good times will continue forever, and so they take out debt to fund their business and lifestyle goals. Over time, lenders lend too much money to borrowers who aren't able to repay. This leads to a financial bubble. At the same time, increased prosperity leads to an unequal distribution of wealth. The gap between the rich and the poor increases. Eventually, the financial bubble bursts, which leads to the printing of money and increased internal conflict between the rich and poor. As a consequence, a revolution occurs to redistribute wealth. While the empire struggles with this internal conflict, its power diminishes relative to other empires who then engage in war to topple the dominant power. This leads to a new world order, and the cycle begins again. I highly recommend both reading Ray Dalio's book The Changing World Order and watching his summary video on YouTube for a comprehensive take. The American world order is in decline and the Chinese world order is on its rise. This transition of power will likely occur after a great war. Dalio believes that if there ever was a war between the US and China, it would likely be over Taiwan. We should want a president who's fully aware of these dynamics, who can prepare us for what's to come, and ideally avoid a conflict in the first place. So does Ray Dalio want the president job? Well, I certainly hope so. Realistically, I don't think he does. Which is exactly why he should have it. Trump will literally rally people to overthrow an election result, and Biden will do anything to please the far left, just to remain in power. All these politicians are way too power hungry. We need a president who's willing to do the job just for the sake of doing the job and who's willing to act in the country's best interest, not their own. Ray Dalio has already enjoyed the pinnacle of success and is in a phase of his life where he just wants to reteach, mentor and give away his life lessons. The fact that he's sharing all of his knowledge for free is a sign that he's well intentioned. He doesn't seem to have a hidden agenda. There are no secretive emails, no sketchy tech returns and no interns under his desk. Realistically, Dalio for Prez won't ever happen, but I personally would have been opposed to it. Politics kinda sucks, and in general, I'm a fan of bringing in non-career politicians, but I understand Trump damaged the public's view on that. America's future is at stake, and Ray Dalio believes we're in a period of stagflation. Keynesian economists used to think that stagflation was an impossible phenomenon, but it did occur in the 1970s, and it is happening again. Watch this video next to learn about the origins of stagflation and how to survive it. Thanks a lot.